Tov. I'm David Fox from Los Angeles, participating in a timely and wonderful program from Vayichan, Ahavas Yisrael, as we embark on the trail leading towards Tisha B'Av. The title of my presentation is Benevolent Gaze, Understanding the Psychological Dynamics of positive social perception. And I have chosen the term benevolent gaze, which I coined, although subsequently I discovered that this expression has been used by some others in a very different context. But I'm going to address the concept of benevolent gaze as one of the tools we want to cultivate in overcoming the scourge of Sinas Chinam and moving closer to the ideal of Ahavas Chinam as translated through Ahavas Yisrael. I wonder if any of you have ever wondered, as you look at the clouds in the sky above, seeing them waft through the heavens with their contourless, irregular shapes, their ambiguity, and as you've looked at the clouds high above and you've imagined that they look like this or like that, and you've perceived them with different shapes or as representing different objects. And yet, you may have noticed that when you match your perceptions with those of others, you discover that there's a range of subjectivity as to how people perceive things that are not entirely clear. And some of this depends on gender. Some of this variance in perceptions depends on age, on maturity level, on intellectual functioning. There are many, many contributing variables. But people look at the ambiguous, at the unfamiliar, or at the unknown with a very, very different spectrum of ideas and of perceptions. And understanding that process has intrigued psychological science for well over a century. And in studying the science of apperception or subjective perception, the science, the research, has revealed to us that the eye literally bounces off so many different areas in the brain that what goes on inside of our minds and what's percolating inside of our hearts literally configures and shapes and taints and biases and flavors that which we see and that which we perceive in what we see. And looking more into that process, what science began recognizing long ago is that so much of a person's perception, particularly of the ambiguous, is going to be influenced by what's lurking deep inside of one so, a person's conflicts, a person's latent attitudes, a person's feelings, moods, level of anger, level of anxiety, a person's degree of shame or of guilt, all of the upheaval, the struggles that are part of being a person are going to shape quite directly and quite profoundly at times what we think we see and what we end up thinking about what we see. 
So our vision is affected by our perception. Our perception is going to affect our cognition. And sometimes the way we look at something directly impacts the way we feel about what we see. And understanding that process led to the term projection. So that in psychological science, it is now very well accepted that a lot of what we feel and think about what we see has been almost predetermined or that we are often predisposed in shaping our reaction to others based on the externalization or the projecting of our own struggles and our own conflicts and we draw conclusions about others that are very, very much determined by things inside of ourselves. And it is no surprise or wonder that long ago our sages also documented that this process of projection, in fact, is a significant mechanism in how people form their social perception. Many of you have come across the curious statement of Chazal in Masech Kedushin that kol ha posel pasul v'mumo posel that a person who looks at another disparagingly and attributes to that person a flaw or a defect, a psul very often is projecting his or her own soul, his or her own conflict, that that which one perceives in others in a negative manner is so much of the time a projection of one's own internal negativity. And we have a related Gomorrah, where Chazal tell us in Bava Metzia, Mum Shebecha, Chazal admonish us, they, they alert us, Mum Shebecha, so much at the time, the deficiency that's lurking within you, al toma lachavercha, that don't attribute it, don't assume that your own struggle, your own deficiency, is what's going on in the other person. So it's quite clear that what psychological science, lahavdil, has studied and is identified as a process of projection which shapes our social perception is also very well understood by our sages, by Chazal. It is a truth, it is a reality. And in understanding some of the disruptive and conflict-ridden nuances of negative social perception, which is the product of negative projection, we find ourselves in awe of a stern assertion of Chazal. It shows up in a number of places, but most poignantly in the fifth parak of Avos, Pirkei Avos, where Chazal identify the nefarious qualities of a Bilam HaRosha and one of those qualities is defined as Ayin Ra'a. Now this should not immediately be mistaken with the more ubiquitous term of Ayin Hara which also is mentioned by Chazal. This is colloquially often a reference to a different mechanism, yet in some places our Mephorshim tell us that Ayin Hara in context is in fact referring to what this Mishnah calls Ayin Ra'a. But apparently, as Chazal explained it, one of the very destructive tendencies of Bilam Harasha in seeing the flaws in seeing the fault, 
in looking to expose the inadequacies of others was a product of his own Ayin Ra, an attitude that tainted his perception in uncovering or assuming the negative in others. And this clearly is at odds with another truism introduced also a couple of places in Avos and in other places in Midrashim and in Shas, where Chazal speak about the lofty ideal, the very positive quality of developing Ayin Tova, of being able to develop a social perception that is one of positivity and optimism rather than one of hatefulness and cynicism. In our quest to understand the pathway to positive social perception and to cultivate for ourselves what I have termed the benevolent gaze, we want to explore some of the steps, practical steps, pragmatic, doable things that we need to be doing because the benevolent gaze, the ayin tova, the ability to develop an assumptive perception that others are good and I want good for them, is a type of avodah shabalev. It's a deep personal process. And it begins with our scanning ourselves, learning to take an honest appraisal of what really goes on inside of ourselves. Because my conflict, my self-perceived inadequacies, the flaws in my personal standards, my hypocrisies, the contradictory values and non-values that weigh on me, all of the fully conscious and partially conscious, as well as the suppressed parts of myself, the parts I don't like, the parts I'm not ready to admit to. It may be my temper, it may be my rage, it may be my biases and my overt prejudices. It may be my dislikes, it may be my moodiness, my apprehensions and my fears. It may be the things that I struggle with and feel guilt or shame over. But all of those dynamic processes which comprise the activity deep within my mind, if I'm unaware of them, if I don't acknowledge them, if I don't own up to them as being processes which are part of my character, they will end up projected. They will become externalized. And when I interact with someone who I don't know, who is not familiar, or I don't fully understand, or even the way I orient to the collective other, which means, in general, my Jewish brothers and sisters, my brethren, my people, who I don't know all of them, but if I am interacting or orienting or thinking about that collective ambiguous mass, if I continue to struggle with conflict, there will be many times when my assumptive attitude about them is actually a reversing of my attitudes about myself. So our first practical step in being able to move towards the important and mentally healthy and spiritually wholesome 
stable quality of positive social perception, of ayin tova, is to be mindful of the things inside of myself over which I struggle and about which I'm in conflict. Because if I'm aware of them and if I acknowledge them, that doesn't mean they're gone, it doesn't mean I've eradicated them, but it doesn't, does mean that I have better defined myself and the limitations of self so that I'm then able to rid my interactions with others with the spillover, the litter that comes from those unaccepted parts of me. And similarly, a practical step in moving past the capacity for negative projection, for unpleasant perceptions of other people, beyond that of self-awareness, is to fortify inside of myself, to declare for myself that I have appropriate values and an appropriate, healthy, necessary value for a person seeking to develop the fabled Ahavas Chinam is to assert and to commit that I march beneath the banner of having the value of care and compassion and love for all Jews. When I assert to myself that I am going to live by the value of Ahavas Yisrael, that I believe in it, that I live it, it's an essential. When I declare to myself that Ahavas Yisrael is a facet of Ahavas Habore, a part of authentically clinging to the ways of God and aiming to fulfill his rutzon for me is to make his rutzon my rutzon, as the Mishnah says. And his rutzon, Yisrael, Ba'araisa, Vakuchabrihu, in so many places, that or a variation of that expression tells us that love of HaKadosh Baruch Hu incorporates an accepting, tolerant, optimistic, pro-social loving of other Jews collectively. And when I live by the value of Ahabas Hashem and I aim to fulfill it, I recognize that the Ahab to Kamocha, that's inseparable from being a spiritual and authentically religious person. And if I live by the imperative of Ahava Sabore, then that means that I value the value of Ahava Yisrael. And in psychology, we define a value as something that's happening in the present, something that I believe in the present that's going to guide my behavior in the future. And that is what a value is, something that I hold true now in the present is going to facilitate how I conduct myself moving forward into the future. And the value of Ahavas Yisrael, knowing it, asserting it, believing it, and pledging to live according to that value, that does help bring into consciousness that my perception of Yidin also is a loving, fond, and caring perception. We speak so much about how we are collectively and individually Rachmanim, compassionate people, and we add to that that we are gomle chasadim, which means that we go out of our ways to be supportive and assisting and caring towards others. And if we're going to live that way, we have to embrace the value. And when we embrace the value consciously, this further helps us along in 
keeping ourselves from our cynical projections that lead to negativity and that can clear the way for me to have an unsalty, sullied and more pure outlook towards other people. And another essential tool in the cultivation of ayin tova, of being able to foster for myself the benevolent gaze that I look at people with the affection, with the desire to give, with the willfulness to be supportive and to be caring. So another step towards that is to monitor my actual conduct. What do I do when I see another Jew in the street? Do I greet them? Do I smile at them, whether I know them or not? Or do I find it uncomfortable when I look the other way? Or do I do something that's even more harmful? And do I ignore them? And we want to monitor our behavior. Jewish people reach out even verbally with the smile, with the acknowledgement, with the Sholem Aleichem, with the good Shabbos. But practicing that behavior, behavior is a form of language. It's a way of communicating. I can communicate through what I say, but I also communicate volumes through what I do or through what I won't do or what I avoid doing. So let's also be mindful that the positive social perception that is so necessary in order to move past the malevolent gaze of needless sinas chinam, unwarranted, unnecessary, and very, very needless hatred and disdain for other people. The way that we move past that is by maintaining an optimistic orientation, by fostering a pure, unadulterated, untarnished outlook and attitude towards others that keeps my own conflict at bay, that doesn't tarnish and doesn't spill out my negativity into my thinking and my perception about others. But if I want to get past my sinas chinam, I have to practice Ahavas Yisrael, the only real Ahavas Chinam is that which is communicated through Ahavas Yisrael. So work on Ayin Tova with Jews in general, with individual Jews in particular, with stranger as well as the nondescript and ambiguous personage who I may or may not know well, keep my assumptions at a distance. Emphasize inside of yourself the positive value, not only of Dan Lukavskhus as opposed to giving people the detriment of the doubt, but by an active development of a positive social perception. And this will be our key to opening up the wholesome and holy treasure chest within of being an Ohev Yisrael.